Hello again and welcome to part three from my series on emotional intelligence. You would remember Mr. Cage that I talked about when I explained the physical pathways of emotional intelligence. Now I'm going to talk more about the psychological and sociological pathways of emotional intelligence. You would all remember that kid at school who was completely useless. He was flunking and failing all subjects. But now we look at that kid and look at Mr. X. He is a very successful businessman. He owns a conglomerate of I don't know what. So what happened there? What does this guy have now that he didn't have back then? And that brings us to the distinction between what we call IQ and EQ. So we are all familiar with intelligent, intelligence coefficient or IQ, which is a measure of human intelligence. That's our understanding. But perhaps what some of you don't know is where that stemmed from. Now, over a hundred years ago, over a century ago, at the beginning of the 20th century, specifically 1904, a psychologist called Spearman did some studies on kids. It was never meant to be to coin humans as this is an idiot and this is a genius. It wasn't for that. It was actually to study their cognitive abilities and why some kids seem to be slow. Is it just being slow cognitively or is it being sick? So that was his intention. But unfortunately, these studies and what he came up with in terms of the cognitive abilities, and they are five, I'm not going to talk about that now, perhaps in another video, but it's more about abstract thinking and inherent cognitive behaviors rather than, um, you know, learned skills or um, learned capabilities. So this guy actually, or his research was used by um, leaders, political leaders in World War I to choose the leadership in platoons and so and so based on these batteries of tests. And then later on, things progress to use those tests to point people as intelligent or stupid. So that's on the one hand. Now let's talk, let's go back to that guy and what really enabled that guy who used to flunk at school to become this successful businessman or businesswoman. It's what we call EQ and that stands for emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence and what is that about? Now, emotional intelligence started, um, or the, the term itself and the study started in uh, the 80s, but it was kind of, you know, pulled together into a framework by Dr. Daniel Goleman of Harvard. And that's by publishing his famous book, Emotional Intelligence in 1995. Now, this book became, or his model became actually a framework for developing leaders. And it became really associated with leadership skills. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. And I'll take you through his framework. But just to set the scene, I would like to um, highlight that emotional intelligence is twice as important as uh, cognitive abilities or what we call IQ, especially especially, and I'm putting here, you know, multiple lines under specially. When you start moving up the career ladder uh, into leadership and more and more senior leadership positions, research has found that 85 to 90 percent of your success as a senior leader is attributed to emotional intelligence and not IQ. And there's lots of case studies to support that, be it General Electric and, and other case studies, perhaps I can talk to you about that in uh, different videos, but we do know from reality and from research that what I'm telling you is super true. Even when we talk about or when we consider sales, we find that salespeople with higher emotional intelligence are capable of doubling the revenue. Imagine. 
Imagine how critical emotional intelligence is. So stay tuned. I'm going to take you through the model that is made up of, of four skill areas that you can work on and develop, and specifically the second of the skill sets, which is emotional control or self-management. Stay tuned.